adjective. These are just three of the many adjectives to describe my experience with CBRC. Since day one, they really supported me, not just cognitively, but also emotionally. Also, the lecturers are all hanep napakagaling. Even the icons, they speak with substance. Even their jokes are substantial. Na talagang may sense. Na kahit ba ilang oras na kaming nakaupo, super, super engaged pa rin kami and pumapasok pa rin sa utak namin. That's why, nung nagkaroon ng online, naging online na ang klase, CBRC really amazed me. Because the quality that they gave to us was just like that of a face-to-face. -face. I'm forever grateful to the icons, to the lecturers, and most importantly, to Sir Carl Balita. When I first saw him during the booster sessions, I was really starstruck. Okay, really starstruck. Kasi matagal ko na talaga siyang hinahangaan, kahit pictures pa lang yan. And then sabi ko, when I saw him, I want to be like him. He's very confident, he's very intelligent, and very may dating eh. Pag nakita mo talaga siya, nagsashine talaga siya eh. Sa kabawat sinasabi niyang words, nakaka-inspire. When he lectured to us, dun talaga, we were really, really inspired to badly top the net because we really want it. That's how he inspired us. And aside from that, he is very outstanding, but he never um, ceases to make us feel that we are amazing as well like him. He reaches to us personally. He nurtures us. He guides us. Thank you, Sir Carl. Thank you, CBRC. And for my CBRC, Isabella Family Survey, Ma'am Shai, Ma'am Karen, Sir RJ, Sir Ryan, thank you so much na kahit ang kulit-kulit na namin minsan, ang ingay-ingay na namin, you really um, stood beside us from day one until the end. Na talagang inabangan nyo kami dun sa um, testing center namin para nang i-congrats kami, para i-boost yung moral namin. Thank you, thank you so much. I'm forever grateful to CBRC, to all the people that work. Alam ko na hindi po talaga biro na mag-shift kayo from face to face and then biglang online. But you still made it and it was very outstanding, very amazing. Thank you so much, CBRC. And I am a proud eagle. All glory to God, all thanks to God. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, good evening, Eagles. Hey, good evening, Eagles. Okay, my name is Kim, Ra um, Kim Ramos, a social science major and a proud product of CBRC. Okay, you can support this program by sending stars. So, what kakalimutan mag send ng star. And, and for those who want to avail CBRC books, okay, the best reviewer for let. And after that, Okay, kindly fill out the Google form. Okay? So, magandang gabi, Eagles. Think you can start. So, ang topic natin ngayon is ang branches of the Philippine government. Okay? Part 10 ng general education, social science area. Okay? The branches of the Philippine government. So, always remember, Eagles, there are three branches of the Philippine government. Tatlo yan. Okay? The legislative, executive, and judicial. Okay? Tatlo yung igal sa huwag kakalimutan. Uh, legislative, executive, and judicial executive uh, branches. Okay? So, pwede kayong gumamit ang acronym dyan. The LEGE, pwede yun. Okay, L stands for legislative, E stands for executive, and J for judicial. Okay, start muna tayo sa Legislative Department. Okay, so ano ba yung trabaho ng Legislative Department? Okay, legislative power is the authority to make laws and to alter and repeal them. Okay, so, tata so tandaan nyo, Eagles, ang Legislative Department po, sila po yung gumagawa ng batas. Okay, tandaan natin. Okay, ang Legislative, sila po yung gumagawa ng batas. Okay. Ano ba yung mga batas na yon Eagles? Yun yung mga Republic Act. Okay. So mamaya, 
na kikita natin yung mga examples ng Republic Act. Okay? So, tandaan nyo, Eagles, meron dalawang houses ang uh, legislative department. Okay? We have the Senate, which is the upper house, and the House of Representatives, which is the lower house. Okay? Sa Senate, meron dyan 24 na senador. Sa House of Representatives naman, meron dyan not more than 250 members unless otherwise fixed by law. Okay? Yan ang nakalagay sa ating constitution. So, Eagle, so, tandaan natin ha. Upper House, Senate, Lower House, House of Representatives. So, Eagles, just in case, gusto niyong tumakbo bilang senador. Ano ba ang qualification natin? Diba? Ano ba yung qualification para maging senador? Just in case na gusto mong tumakbo. So, yan. Kailangan, of course, Natural born citizen of the Philippines ka. Pag sinabing natural born eagles, yun yung pagkapanganak mo, Pilipino ka na agad. Hindi mo kailangan gumawa ng kahit ano para maging Pilipino. That's natural born citizen. Okay? So halimbawa, um, ano ka? Ang Chinese ka, okay? yung taka ng Pilipinas, Tapos nag ano ka, naturalize, nagpalit ang naging Pilipino ka. So question, pwede ka mong tumakbo bilang senador? Hindi po. Bakit? Kasi kailangan natural born. Okay? Hindi naturalize ha, natural born. Second, kailangan at least 35 years of age on the day of the election. Okay? So 35. So ako hindi pa ako pwedeng tumakbo bilang senador. So Ayan. So pangatlo, kailangan able to read and write. So kailangan marunong magbasa at magsulat. So ayun, no? check natin. Yung mga binoto ba natin senador, last time marunong ba silang magbasa at magsulat. Ayan. Third is kailangan of course registered voter. And yung last is resident of the Philippines for not less than two years. Okay. Ayan. Kailangan senador... Um, Residente ka ng Pilipinas o nakatira ka sa Pilipinas ng not, uh, for not less than two years. Yan. How about the district representative? Okay, sila yung mga nasa House of Representatives, di ba? Nasa lower house. So ano ba yung qualification nila? Of course, kailangan natural born citizen of the Philippines din. Okay, again, Pagkapanganak mo, kailangan Pilipino ka na agad. Huwag kakalimutan. Hindi pa yung naturalize ha? Hindi pwede yun. Kailangan natural born uh, Filipino citizen. Ito naman, at least 25 years of age on the day of the election. So ito, medyo mas mababa yung age qualification. Kung sa senador, kailangan 35 ka. Dito, um, at least 25 years of age pwede na. Okay, so ayan. So check nga natin, no? yung mga kaibigan ba natin, baka gustong tumakbo bilang district representative. So kailangan 25 na sila, di ba? On the day of the election. At least 25, di ba? So ayan, able to read and write, yan na naman. Okay, kailangan marunong magbasa at marunong magsulat. Okay, registered voter, of course, in the district in which He shall be elected. A registered voter. Tapos, um, resident for that district. Okay, again, huwag kakalimutan, for that district, for a period of not less than one year. Okay, so, yan, no? Ito yung qualification kung gusto mong tumakbo bilang district representative. Yan, no? Again, part, part, nasa ano pa rin tayo? Legislative department. So yan, ito, sabi ko nga sa inyo, ano ba ang trabaho ng legislative department? Sila po yung gumagawa ng batas, teachers. Sila po yung gumagawa ng batas, ano yung mga batas na yon? Yun yung mga Republic Act, RA, ganyan, number. So yan, so, yan alam nyo na. 
Pag nakakita kayo ng Republic Act, batas yun. Sino yung gumawa? The Congress. Okay? Ayan. Okay, ayan. Repo example ng Republic Act. Republic Act number 10533 or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Okay, the K-12 law. Okay, alam nyo yan, right? The K-12 law. Another one. Republic Act number 11469 or the Bayanihan to heal as one act. Okay, so ayan. Pandemic, no? Then, Republic Act number 9262 or the Anti-Violence Act Against Women and Their Children Act or mas kilala bilang the Vowsy Law. Okay, so ayan. So, yan yung mga example ng Republic Act. Again, sino po yung gumawa niyan? Gawa po yan ng ating mga um, sa ating mga senador at mga district representatives. Depende lang yan kung sino yung nag-author, right? So, ayan. Okay, the power of the Congress. Okay, again, legislative power. Ang kapangyarihan po ng Kongreso, gumawa po ng batas. Okay? Yan, gumawa ng batas, ang miyendahan ng batas, di ba? Or kung may kakulangan sa batas, sila yung mag-supply nun through um, enactment of a law. Yan. So, next power. Specific power of appropriation. Okay? The spending power. Okay? Or the power of the purse belongs to the Congress. Yan. It carries with it the power to specify the project or activity to be funded under the appropriation law. So, ayan. Congress po ang gumagawa niyan. Congress po ang nagbabudget niyan. Okay? So, ayan. The power of appropriation or the power of the purse. Okay? Kanino po yan sa ating mga ka, sa Congress po yan? Okay? Next, taxation and expropriation. Okay, so ayan. The power of taxation, uh, power of taxation um, features belongs to the Congress. The inherent power of taxation belongs to the Congress. Okay, so ano ba yung taxation features? It is the power by which the sovereign, through its lawmaking body, raise revenue for the expenses of the government. Okay, so wag ka kalimutan. That's taxation. So napaka-importante ng taxation sa atin. Eh, lahat yan, government projects, pampasweldo, sa mga empleyado ng gobyerno, galing yan sa tax ng taong bayan. Eh, ganun ka-importante ang taxation. Okay? Ang taxation din ang tinatawag na the lifeblood of the government. Andaan, taxation is the lifeblood of the government. Okay? That's the power of taxation. Ito naman, expropriation, uh, teachers, it is the actual taking of the land. Okay? The actual taking of the private land for public purpose. Okay? Meron tayong expropriation, meron expropriation power ang gobyerno dahil sa power of eminent domain. Okay? Di ba meron tatlong inherent powers of the government? Di ba? Inherent powers. The police power, power of taxation, power of eminent domain. Okay? Ayan o. Uh, meron tayong expropriation uh, power dahil meron silang power of eminent domain. Doon nagmula yun. Okay? Ayan. So, o taxation, madali lang. Bakit pwedeng, bakit pwede tayong, bakit nagbabayad tayo ng buwis? Dahil nga sa taxation. So, ayan. O yan, madali lang naman siyang intindihin. Next is legislative investigations or in, uh, legislative in aid of legislation. Okay, huwag kakalimutan, in aid of legislation. Ito siguro, narinig nyo na tong term na to, no? The in aid of legislation. Okay, it refers to inquiries related to the implementation or re-examination re of any law or appropriation or in connection with any proposed legislation and for the formulation of or in connection with future legislation. Okay, nangyayari in aid of legislation, teachers, Kasi para malaman ng ating kongreso, may, may kulang ba sa batas? May kailangan ba amyendahan sa batas? 
diba? may kailangan bang dagdagan sa batas, yan yung purpose ng in-aid of legislation. Okay? Or ano ba yung batas na yan? Baka naman, pwede, baka naman dapat um, i-abolish na yan, di ba? So yan yung purpose ng in-aid of legislation. Okay? Kasi minsan, teachers, pag gumagawa tayo ng batas, minsan hindi natin makikita yung lapses unless ipa-implement na natin. Di ba? So ayan. So nakita pag pina-implement natin yung patas, ay, yun pala, may loophole pala doon. Okay? So, may, may, may part pala na provisions na kailangan amyendahan. Diba? So, yan yung purpose ng in-aid of legislation. Okay? So, yan. That's legislative investigation. Kakalimutan, teachers. And the uh, power to propose constitutional amendments. Okay? So, ayan. Ito, teachers. The Congress doesn't have the power to amend the Constitution. Always remember, the Congress doesn't have the power to amend the Constitution. They only have the power to propose constitutional amendment. Ayan. So, hindi nila pwedeng baguhin ng batas. Ang pwede lang nilang gawin is mag-propose ng pagbabago sa batas. At a-aprobahan natin yun, siyempre. Ayan. Diba? Ngayon, nauuso ngayon yan, di ba? Usap-usapan ngayon yan. Kasi, Nauuso na naman yung uh, discussion about federalism. Diba? E sa ating saligang batas sa 1987 Constitution, hindi naman tayo federal government. So if kung gusto natin maging federal government, kailangan natin amyendahan ng ating Constitution. So yun lang yun. E kaya nauuso na naman ang usapan constitutional amendment. Ayan. Next is, ayan, the power to impeach. Ayan. Impeachment. Okay? Ayan, di ba? Diba? Congress. Okay, ayan. Kung meron tayong, kung gumagawa ng batas ang ating legislative department, di ba? Dapat meron nagpapa-implement ng batas. Ayan. Sino po ba dapat ang magpa-implement ng batas or mag-enforce ng batas? Yun ang trabaho ng executive department. Ayan. Okay, so yan po. Executive department. The power to, executive power is the power to enforce and administer the laws. Okay, yung laws na yun, or yung batas na yun, ang gumawa nun yung kongreso. Okay. So again, may gumagawa ng batas, at syempre may nagpapa-implement ng batas. Yun yung trabaho ng executive department. Okay. Of course, sino-sino ba ang miyembro ng executive department? Of course, number one, the president. The head of the executive. The uh, president. The vice president. Okay? The cabinet members. Okay? Ito yung mga department secretaries. Okay? Yan, sila yung ating miyembro ng gabinete, kung tawagin, ba sa Tagalog. Okay? So, yan. Sila yung miyembro ng executive department. Okay? So again, ayun lang, teachers, thank you po sa lahat na nagsisend ng star. Okay, again, um, to support this program, kindly click the star. Okay, click lang po natin. Huwag po tayo may hiyang mag-star. Ayan, -click na, i-click po natin yung uh, star. Ayan, okay. Okay, ayan. Qualification of the president and vice president. Okay, just in case kayo gusto nyo tumakbo, balang araw, ba? gusto nyo maging pangulo, ano ba yung dapat natin? Ano ba yung dapat na meron ka? Okay? Yan. Kailangan natural born citizen of the Philippines. Okay? Again, walang natural born na naman. Again, pag sinabing natural born, kailangan pagkapanganak mo, Pilipino ka na agad. Wala kang ibang dapat gawin okay, para maging Pilipino. That's natural born. Yun. Registered voter, of course. Then, Able to read and write. Ayan. Kailangan marunong kang magbasa and kailangan marunong kang magsula. Okay? Kung ito, at ang mukha bilang Pangulo. Okay? Ito. At least 40 years of age on the day of the election. So, ayan. So, medyo mas mataas ang age qualification pagdating sa Pangulo. Then, President of the Philippines for at least 10 years immediately preceding such election. 
Okay, so ayan po, 10 years. Kailangan nakatera ka sa Pilipinas for 10 years. Okay, so ayan. Eto teachers, ato, question. Kailangan ba college graduate pag tumakbo bilang Pangulo? Kailangan ba college graduate? Yes or no? Of course, no. Hindi kailangan college graduate para tumakbo bilang Pangulo. Okay. How about civil, um, kailangan meron kang ano, license. Professional license. Kailangan ba yon Para tumakbo bilang Pangulo? Hindi din. Hindi po kailangan. Okay. Ito lang po ang qualification natin sa bilang Pangulo. Hindi po natin ito pwedeng dagdagan. Okay. Hindi rin po yung pwedeng bawasan. Okay. Yan po ang nakalagay sa ating sa ligang batas. Okay. Ito, another uh, another question. Kailangan ba meron ng 10 years experience sa government service para makatakbo bilang Pangulo? Hindi rin po pwede. Okay. Kasi ano lang po yung kailangan? Yan lang po. Eh, yung binanggit ko lang. So, ayan. Okay. So, next, ano tayo? next slide. Okay. The power of the president. Okay. Ano-ano ba ang kapangyarihan ng Pangulo? Okay. Of course, they have, or the, the president has the executive power. Again, ano yung executive power? Yun yung um, may kakayahan siya mag-implement ng batas. Okay. Yan. Executive power. Uh, the president shall have the control of all executive departments, bureaus, and offices. He, say, um, he shall ensure that the laws are faithfully executed. Okay. It is the power to enforce and administer the law. Okay. Yeah, no? That's executive power. Okay. The power of appointment. Okay. Power of appoint. Again, from the word itself, ano yung power of appointment? Power to appoint a particular individual into office. Okay. So, di ba ngayon? nagkakaroon na tayo ng balita, di ba? Pag nanonood kayo ng balita, nagkakaroon tayo ng mga uh, mga news re um, regarding sa mga possible na maging department secretaries, di ba? Ni President-elect Bongbong Marcos. So, ayun, no? So, si, of, course, of course, si Bongbong Marcos pwede siyang mag-appoint ng kanyang mga department secretaries. Okay? Dahil, yung, dahil meron siyang power of appointment. So kung merong power of appointment um teachers of course kailangan meron din power of removal okay always remember eagles always remember the power to appoint includes the power to remove okay? so kung may kung meron kang kakayahan na mag-appoint ng, ng particular individual sa para mamuno meron ka ring kakayahan na tanggalin siya Okay, so ayan, yun yung ano natin, premise natin. The power to appoint includes the power to remove. Yun, no? Of course, hindi naman lahat, okay? May mga pagkakataon, Eagles, may mga pagkakataon na yes, inappoint siya ng Pangulo or inaprobahan ng Pangulo ang kanyang um, appointment pero hindi siya pesta-basta pwedeng tanggalin ng Pangulo. Okay? Halimbawa, in the case of Chief Justice, okay, yes, the President approved the appointment of Chief Justice. Okay? However, however, the President cannot remove the Chief Justice. Why? Because Chief Justice of the Supreme Court is impeachable officials. Okay? So pwede lang po maalis ang Chief Justice through impeachment. Yun, hindi siya pesta pwede tanggalin ng Pangulo. So yeah, so may mga exceptions lang yan. Okay, teachers, tandaan lang po natin. Basta ang general rule, the power to appoint includes the power to remove. Yo, no? Okay. Next is the power of control and supervision. Okay, so yan. Again, the power of control, sa ano yan? Um, sa executive yan. Okay, the power of the president shall have the control of all executive departments, bureaus, and offices. Okay, so ayan. So, ang Pangulo daw mayroon siyang control sa mga departments. Control. Magkaiba yan sa supervision. Okay, huwag kakalimu. Okay, huwag malilito ha. 
Pag supervision, ano lang siya, parang pagbabantay lang. Sinusupervise lang siya, pero hindi siya kinokontrol. Yun yung ano natin. Power of control, da- dapat yung pati actions mo, kay binabant- um, pinabantayan ng Pangulo. Okay? Pero yung supervisions, um, ano lang yung actions, mga actions, titignan lang natin kung tama yung ginagawa. Okay? That's supervision. Okay, power of con- ang presidente, meron siyang power of control over departments. Okay? However, ang presidente, meron siyang power of supervision over LGU or the local government unit. Okay? Ayun. Okay? Kung pangulo daw, meron meron lang siyang power of supervision sa mga LGU, mayor, 'di ba? Vice mayor 'yan. Okay? So 'yan po. The power of the president. Okay? Ito, the borrowing power. Ayan, may, may ano yan, di ba? Again, kung nanonood kayo ng balita, the, the president has the borrowing power to uh, to obtain foreign loans, di ba? From the word itself, Tagalog, borrow, uh, utang, di ba? Ang Pangulo pwede siyang umutang or to obtain foreign loans. Ayan, di ba? Nababalitaan natin, di ba? Ating Pangulo, uh, nagkakaroon siya, umuutang siya, di ba? And of course, yung pera naman na inutang, ginagamit naman yun for public uh, purposes. So, ayan. Next is residual powers. Ito, very unique to. Residual powers. Pag sinabi yung residual powers, um, great, uh, teachers, ito yung mga powers na or authority na hi- yes, hindi siya legislative, hindi rin sa judicial. So, it is presumed na part siya ng powers ng Pangulo. That's residual powers. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? That's residual powers. So, so ayan. Um, Eagles, yan po ang um, um, common, okay? Some of the powers of the President. Some of the powers of the President. Okay? Executive power, power of appointment, power of removal, power of control and supervision, the borrowing power, and residual power. Okay? Po. Okay. So, teachers, kung merong gumagawa ng batas, okay, merong nagpapa-implement ng batas, the question is, sino ang nag interpret ng batas? Or sino ang nagsasabi na yung tunay na definition ng particular provision of this law. Okay? Sino ba? Yun ang trabaho ng judicial department. Yan. Ang ating mga hukom. The judges. The justices. Yan. Yan yung trabaho ng ating judicial branch or judicial department. Okay? The power to interpret the law. Okay? Sila yung nag interpret ng particular na batas. Okay? Ayan. Okay, tandaan natin, that's judicial department. Okay, great um, teachers, ano ang pinakamataas na hukom sa Pilipinas? Okay, any idea? Pinakamataas na hukom sa Pilipinas, it is the Supreme Court. Okay, Supreme Court is the court of the last resort. Okay, mamaya manalaman natin bakit Supreme Court is the court of the last resort. Okay. Supreme Court din po is the final arbiter of the law. Okay, so ayan. Okay, tandaan po natin the power to interpret the law. Trabaho po yan ng judicial department. So again, tatlo na. Tatlo na yung nabanggit ko, right? We have the legislative, the power to create the law, legislative, gumagawa ng batas, legislative, power to, power to enforce the law, Okay. Trabaho yan ng executive department or executive branch. And power to interpret the law. Trabaho yan ng judicial department. Okay. So, yan. Pag yung nabanggit ko, ano? The three branches of the government. Okay. So, yan. Ito yung hierarchy of courts natin, teachers, the CBRC Eagles. Okay. Ayan. Okay. Halimba, um, magisimula yun sa pinakamababa, hierarchy from the word itself, hierarchy, hierarchy of courts. Magisimula yun sa pinakamababa, pataas, papunta sa Supreme Court. Okay. Halimbawa, halimbawa lang, for example, 
Eh, para lang mas ma-appreciate nyo yung, ano, yung discussion. Eh, o yung hierarchy of courts. Halimbawa, sinampahan mo yung boyfriend mo or girlfriend mo, ano yung kaso mo sa kanya? Breach of promise to forever. Ayan, okay. Sinampahan mo siya ng breach of promise to forever. Bakit ka nagsampa ng breach of promise to forever? Kasi, hiniwalayan ka ni girlfriend or ni boyfriend kasi kailangan niya daw ng space. Ayan, so... Kailangan niya daw ng space, so sinampahan mo siya. Ano yung kasa mo sa kanya? The breach of promise to forever. Saka magpa-file, halimbawa lang, for example, nag-file ka sa municipal trial court sa MPC. Ano yung kinasa mo sa boyfriend mo? The breach of promise to forever. Ayan. So, nag-dismiss yung aso, natalo ka. So, saka pila. Okay? Apil ka sa RTC, sa regional trial court. Okay, again, ano yung kaso mo sa boyfriend mo? The breach of promise to forever. Ayan. Okay, so ayan, RTC na tayo. Tapos, wala, na-dismiss na naman yung kaso. Next is, nag-appeal na naman sa Court of Appeals. Ayan. So ayan, nasa Court of Appeals na yung kaso mo. Okay? Wala, ganoon ulit, na-dismiss na, na, dismiss na naman yung kaso. So, sa kaapila, sa Supreme Court na. Sa pinakamataas na korte. Okay? So, ayan. So, nasa Supreme Court na tayo. Okay? Wala. Same pa din. Na-dismiss pa din yung kaso. Okay? So, ayan. Pag na-dismiss yung kaso, sa kaapila, pag na-dismiss yung kaso ng Supreme Court, sa kaapil, wala ka na po. <laughs> Hindi na po tayo pwede mag-apil. Wala na. Kasi ang Supreme Court na po, ang pinakamataas na hukom. Ayan. Okay. So, yan po. That's the judicial department. Okay, the power to interpret the law. Okay? Ito, para mas magets nyo, ang teachers. Legislative branch. Ayun. Ito, nagbigay ko ng um column para mas magets nyo yung paano sila nagfo-function. Okay? Legislative branch. Gumawa ng batas. Ano yung ginawang batas? Republic Act Number One Zero Five Three Three, or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of Twenty Thirteen. Ayan. Sino pa yung gumawa niya ng ating Kongreso or the Congress? Okay. But the question is, sino magimplement niya? Sino magimplement ng Enhanced Basic Education Act of Twenty Thirteen? Sino magimplement? Of course, the DepEd, the Department of Education. And the Department of Education is part of the executive branch, right? Part of the cabinet members, so kanina, the diba? department secretaries. So ayan. Bakit sila? Kasi sila yung may expertise about sa education. So sila yung mag-implement niyan. So ayan, di ba? So meron tayong batas, Republic Act 10533, ang nag-implement DepEd, Department of Education. Okay? Pero ganito, um, teachers, alam nyo ba na na-challenge dati yung constitutionality ng K-12 law or the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013? Sinalin siya. Diba? May petition. Okay? However, na-dismiss yung petition. Okay? The K-12 law curriculum is constitutional, sabi ng Supreme Court. Ayan. Supreme Court po ang sumasagot, just in case merong issue ng constitutionality sa particular law, sila po yung sumasagot nun. Okay? Judicial branch po yun. So, ayan. Okay? And sabi ng Supreme Court about sa K-12 law, the K-12 law is part of exercise of police power. Ayan. Okay? So, po. Ganun to po siya nag-function. Okay? Legislative, executive, and judicial branch. Okay. Again, uh, bago, po, bago po tayo pumunta sa next slide, okay, again, kung gusto po natin bumili ng books, okay, meron po tayong Google link dyan. Just click nyo lang yun. Okay, CBRC Books, the best reviewer for that. Okay, yeah. CBRC Reviewers or CBRC Books. Okay, meron po tayong link. Um, fill up lang kayo. Okay. Ayan. Who is the highest among the three branches? Any idea? Letter A, executive. Letter B, legislative. Letter C, judicial ba yan? Or D, none of the above. Okay? Tingnan, comment sa, um, 
Lagay niyo yung answer niyo sa comment section. What's your answer? Sa comment section, lagay niyo. Lagay niyo yung answer niyo sa comment section. Ano yung, um, who is the highest among the three branches? Executive? Legislative? Judicial? Or uh, letter D, none of the above. Lagay niyo yung answer niyo sa comment section. Okay? So, ayan. The correct answer is, ayan, very good. None of the above. Okay? Bakit none of the above? Because of separation of power. Walang, walang mataas sa kanilang tatlo. Okay? Walang nakakataas, wala rin nakakababa. Okay? Co-equal. Okay? Co-equal lang sila. Okay? Um, hindi po executive, y yun, yun yung common notion ng ating mga ng ibang, uh, ng ibang students kasi nga naman gawa ng presidente, di ba? Pero hindi po, co-equal lang po sila. Okay? Sa executive, co-equal lang siya sa legislative and co-equal lang siya kay judicial. Okay? So, ayan. The correct answer is none of the above because of the concept of separation of power. Okay? So, ayan. Nakalimutan. Okay. okay, teachers, ano pa yung concept ng separation of power? Okay. Ibig sabihin, each of the three great branches of the government has exclusive okay, and supreme in matters falling within its own constitutionality allocated sphere. So, again, do, yun, 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 no? So, sa Tagalog, okay, sa legislative branch, hindi niya pwede pakailaman yung trabaho ng executive branch. Okay? And si executive branch din naman, hindi niya pwede pakailaman yung trabaho ng judicial branch. Bakit? They are co-equal. Okay? Pantay-pantay lang sila. Walang nakakataas, walang nakakababa. Okay? So, ayan, huwag kakalimutan. Okay po. However, teachers, question. May mga pagkakataon ba na pwedeng pakailaman ni executive si legislative branch or si judicial si pwedeng pakailaman ni judicial si legislative branch or executive branch. Eh, may mga pagkakataon bang ganoon, teachers? Um, meron po. Okay, yes, meron po. Yan yung tinatawag na The principles of checks and balances. Separation of power is not absolute. Always remember, separation of power is not absolute. May mga limitation yan. Okay? Yun na nga yung the principles of checks and balances. Okay? It allows one department to rectify the mistakes and excess committed by the other departments. Okay? So, ayan. Example. Okay, the president may exercise the veto power. Okay? But, um, so, ano po yung concept ng veto power? Ay, ganito yun. In lawmaking process, um, teach, uh, Eagles, in the lawmaking process, yun, may, may, may mga readings yan. Okay? First reading, second readings, third readings. Tapos, pupunta sa other house. First reading, second readings, third readings ulit. Tapos, magkakaroon ng enrolled bill. Then, pupunta sa office ng Pangulo. Yung particular um, act or particular bill. Bill pa lang yung tawag. Diba? House bill or Senate bill. Hindi pa siya act. May bill pa lang yung tawag. Pagpunta sa Pangulo, okay? halimbawa, ayaw ng Pangulo na yung particular, bat yung particular na batas okay? na gawa ng Kongreso is either um, detrimental siya okay? or is either unconstitutional yung nasabing batas, okay, pwedeng ibalik ng Pangulo yung batas na yun. Okay, yun, yung, yun yung veto power. Pwede yung i-veto. Okay? Veto. Veto power. Pwede yung i-veto ng Pangulo yung nasabing batas. Ayan. Okay? So, yun po. Of course, pero na yung veto message. Okay? Kung bakit ayaw ng Pangulo yung particular na batas na yun. Okay? And again, um, teachers, for, again, the best reviewer, the best uh, uh, books for lit. Okay, pwede po tayo umorder. Nasa pin comment lang po yung ang Google link. Okay, click nyo lang yon. Okay, huwag kakalimutan. Ayan, huwag din kakalimutan mag-send ng star. Ayan, huwag kakalimutan. Okay, send lang kayo ng send ng star. 
teacher to support this program. And for, again, for the books, that's a pin comment na po yun. Okay? Again, ito. The principles of blendings of power. Assertive, ano po yung blendings of powers? There are instances, teachers, when powers are not confined exclusively within one department, but are assigned to or shared by several departments. That's blendings of powers from the work itself. Nagbe-blend, nagahalo. Okay? So yan, blend. Blendings of powers. Example ng blendings of powers, teachers. The president enters into and ratifies a treaty with foreign countries and the Senate concurs with the, uh, with the same. Okay? So the, the treaty making teacher or teachers, eagles, the treaty making, dalawa yung may trabaho dyan. The president tsaka yung Senate, hindi lang yung Pangulo yan. Kailangan niya aprobahan ng Senado. Okay? So that's blendings of powers. Yeah. Again, that's executive, that's legislative, that's judicial. Okay? The three branches of the Philippine government. Legislative, power to create the law, create, gumagawa ng batas, power to implement the law, implement executive yon, power to interpret, nag interpret judicial yon. Okay, so yan. Okay? Thank you, sir. Um, thank you very much po sa lahat na nag-send ng star and sa lahat ng order po ng box. Thank you very much po. Again, for the box, nasa pin comment lang po ang ating um, link okay, sa mga gustong umorder ng the best reviewer, okay, the best book. Okay. Uh, ito. Sa exercise. The power of the purse belongs to letter A, executive, B, judicial. Judicial ba yan? C, Department of Finance. Or D, none of the above. Okay? Lagyan niyo yung answer niyo sa comment section. Okay, ano kaya yung tanong sagot? Okay? Lagyan niyo. Again, the power of the purse. What's your answer? Executive ba yan? Judicial ba yan? The Department of Finance? Or none of the above? What's your answer? Okay. The correct answer is na, D, none of the above. Bakit none of the above? Hindi na banggit niya ng Congress sa choices. So, ayan. Okay. The power of the purse belongs to the Congress, Legislative Department. Nabanggit ko yan kanina sa power of appropriation, di ba? Sa part ng Legislative. Power of appropriation. O. So, next question. Yan. Ha? Ito. What is the age qualification for district representative? Okay, ano nga ba? Just in case gusto nyo tumakbo bilang district representative. Ano pa yung qualification natin? Letter A, 21 years of age. Letter B, 21, parang age ko, no? Okay, 21. Letter B, 22. Ayan. Letter C, 23. Ayan, 23 ba yan? Or, letter D, 25 years of age. Ano kaya? Ano kaya yung tamang sagot? Any guess, teachers? Lagyan nyo lang sa comment section, no? Lagyan nyo lang yung, lagyan nyo lang yung letter. Letter na lang yung lagyan nyo. Okay. Ano ba yan? Letter A ba yan? 21? Parang age ko, okay? 22 ba yan? Letter B? 23? Or 25, letter D? Okay? Yes, very good. The correct answer is letter D. Okay, 20, at least 25 years of age. Okay, 25 pataas. Okay, ayan. At least 25 years of age. Pa, kung gusto mong tumakbo bilang district representative. So, ayan po. Okay, again, thank you very much po sa lahat na nag-send ng star and sa mga umorder po ng books. Ayan. Yeah, for the books, nasa pin comment lang po ang, go, ang link sa mga gustong umorder po ng books. Next is, ayan. The following descriptions pertain to the office of the Congress. Except, oops, ayan. 
sa board exam nyo, may mga ganyang question, no? Minsan malilito kayo, may except pala sa dulo. Okay, except. Ibig sabihin, teachers, sa choices na yan, may isa dyan ang hindi nagde-describe sa, sa Congress. So, yun po yung word, yun po yung meaning ng word na except. Okay, so be careful lang, no? Basahin po natin maigi yung question. Kasi minsan, ang haba ng question, eh. Tapos may except pala sa dulo, di ba? So, ayan. Or minsan, baka hindi mo na, baka, or minsan, baka hindi mo na mabasa yung word na except, na except ka magsagot, ayan. So, ayan, be careful lang po, teachers, no? Sa pagsagot sa board exam. Except. Ayan. Letter A, the power of the purse. Letter B, bicameral. Bicameral ba yan? Letter C, members of the bar. Okay. Congress, members of the bar. Letter D, holds the inherent powers of the state. Okay. Any wild guess, the teachers? Ano, uh, ano ang sagot nyo? Ano kaya? Ano kaya tamang sagot siya? The following description pertains to the office of the Congress. Except, oops, may word na except. Power of, uh, power of the purse ba yan? Bicameral? Members of the bar? What's the inherent power of the state? Okay. What's your answer, teachers? Ayan. Okay, that's good. Very good. Okay, the correct answer is letter C. The members of the bar. Okay, again, pag sinabing members of the bar, teachers, Ang uh, abogado ka. Okay, nakapasa ka ng bar exam. Abogado ka. Okay. Again, hindi po kailangan abogado para tumakbo bilang senador or bilang congressman. Okay. Hindi po yan nakalagay sa qualification na binanggit ko kanina. Okay. Hindi mo kailangan abog hindi kailangan abogado ni hindi kailangan college graduate. Okay. So, ayan. Yung mga binanggit ko lang po kanina, yun lang po yung qualification. Okay. At ang members of the bar, okay, um, teachers, tingin nyo, saan kaya ito applicable? Sa ang department, dapat members of the bar ka. Saan kaya department yun? Any, um, sa, choice, sa tatlong bilanggit ko, executive, legislative, judicial, saan kaya dapat abogado ka? Any idea? Any idea ba kayo? Saan kailangan abogado ka? Sa tatlong department, executive, judicial, or legislative? Sa judicial. Okay? Ang ating mga hukom po, the judge and the justices are members of the bar. Abogado po sila. They are all lawyers. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? So, again, teachers, thank you very much po sa lahat na nag-send ng star. Okay? And, again po, sa mga gusto ko more din ng the best uh, si, uh, the best reviewer or nasa pin comment lang po ang Google link. Okay? And teachers, ito yung hindi ko nakakalimutan motivational quotes from Sir Carl. Okay? Ito. Let me read for you, teachers. Some are lucky, not because they are lucky. They are just assertive enough to say that they can do it. Okay? So ayan, yun yung talagang motivational um, lagi kong inaalala nung nag-review ko ng board exam. Okay? Hanggang ngayon, okay? Bina, uh, pag nawawala ko ng motivation, bina, tatanahan ko lang yung sinabi ni Circle sa amin dati. Okay? So, again, some are lucky, not because they are lucky, they are just assertive enough to say that they can do it. So kayo, teachers, alam ko, yes, mahirap mag-review. Naranasan namin lahat yan. Okay? Nakakapagod. Napuyat. Okay? Tapos, pagising, kailangan gawin na maaga. Imbis na, kailangan, imbis na kakain ka, mag-aaral ka. So lahat, alam namin yung pakiramdam na yan. But again, in the end of the day, lahat yan magbubunga. Okay? Lahat kayo magiging successful and lahat kayo magiging professional teachers. Okay? So again, thank you very much po for listening. And again, thank you, thank you po sa lahat na nag-send ng star. And again, pag yung mga gusto pong umorder ng books, huwag kakalimutan, nasa pin comment na po ang ating TBRC books. Okay, fill up lang kayo doon. Okay po.
Okay, maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng nakinig. Okay? And thank you very much po. Thank you.